Hello and welcome to the first part of our Azamara World series focusing on the historic spice route from Singapore to Dubai. And we start rather abruptly on an Emirates Boeing 777-300ER in the business class cabin. A full review of this very aircraft and our business class experience can be found in the link above, so as not to make this series too long and unfocused. We flew overnight from London Stansted Airport to Dubai, fueled by Cosmos and Warm Nuts. We stopped at Dubai International Airport for three hours before embarking on the second leg of our flight from Dubai to Singapore. Here's a link to our review of the fabulous and gargantuan Airbus A380, which includes a look around the main business lounge at DBX. Please give it a look and please consider subscribing to our channel. We may do more aircraft reviews if you enjoy them. Our embarkation city was Singapore and would you believe we did a separate video all about what we got up to in the couple of days we spent there. I can sense through the screen that your appetite needs wetting for it, so here's a quick montage of that one. you and congratulations. If you've got this far, you've actually made it to the main event, the Azamara Quest. Azamara had not docked at the Marina Bay Cruise Center, which would have been very handy as we were staying at the Marina Bay Sands Resort. <laughs> and you've guessed it, a review video is coming soon. <laughs> Talk about milking it. Instead, the Quest was waiting for us at the rather less glamorous Singapore Cruise Center at Harbourfront. However, Despite its rather less glam position, Harbour Front is connected to Vivo City, the largest shopping mall in Singapore, and across the water from Sentosa Island, where a Universal Studios theme park, and therefore much merriment, is located. Can't wait to come back and have a poke around there, although I may choose not to get there by cable car. I'm not a huge fan of dangling and swaying off a wire not much thicker than a Singapore noodle in a little glass box. Mmm. The sail away from here is probably more fascinating than the one from Marina Bay as you pass through the container port area, the world's second busiest in terms of total shipping tonnage processed here, which represents a fifth of the world's shipping containers and half the world's annual supply of crude oil. Yep, it's busy. And that is more than a little evident by the sheer density of the number of ships kicking around here. Literally thousands of ships drop anchor in these waters, and it's not for the cleanliness of the air, which is thicker than the hairspray on your nan's bouffant, and for which Singapore was recently ranked sixth worst city in the world for air quality. A quiet evening of posh nosh and a few drinks followed. We were too tired after trying to hold our breath all day. Thankfully, 
the air-conditioned luxury of our room rebalanced our oxygen levels and we were soon asleep. Our sea day followed and it was blowing a proper hoolie, which made me want to clamber into the hot tub even more. By the time I did, it had left off a bit, but it was still raining that warm Malaysian rain. Oh, heaven. The Malacca Strait was peppered with fishing boats and although I suspect this one didn't have a hot tub, the entire crew were wearing nothing but speedos. <laughs> I didn't think they allowed Italian fishing boats in these waters. I suspect they didn't have a patio grill on board either, and that's where we took the opportunity to try the Beyond Burger from Azamara's increasingly decent vegan menu. Although this wasn't it, Helen had eaten it before I got a chance to take a picture. The evening gave us the captain's welcome and we were pleased to learn the captain was born and raised in Norfolk, UK, our home county, which also produced Lord Admiral Nelson, the most famous and heroic naval seaman our country has ever produced. I'd say he was in good company then. Our captain hadn't quite achieved his own statue atop a column in Trafalgar Square in London yet, but there's still time. After a sea day of contrasting weather but constant humid temperatures, our first stop, blissfully free from the smog we had left behind, was Tiny Way Island off the northern tip of Sumatra and its main, yet tinier still, city of Sabang. The total population of which would fill about a third of the Dallas Cowboys indoor stadium in Texas. The most northern and western city in Indonesia, it's home to around 35,000 of the friendliest people we have ever met on our travels, and with that in mind, it's not surprising that they gave us a fabulous welcome. dressed the captain up as a king, which he took with great humour and a little bemusement. We were told Sabang is visited by only half a dozen ships, not per day, not even per week, but per year. Yes, this destination is a rarity indeed, and perfectly demonstrates Azamara's commitment to seeking out fascinating and unusual ports of call. Our day was pretty packed and it start with a trip to Way Island's active volcano. The island is known for its ecosystem and a large proportion of it, and the sea around it, is a designated wildlife protection area. The volcano bubbled and hissed underneath us and smelt like a million rotten eggs. Unsurprisingly, we didn't stop long before heading off to a local school, which smelt infinitely sweeter and turned out to be the highlight of our day. The 
children organised a traditional dance and they absolutely loved us being there. They crowded around us, thrusting bits of paper and pencils in our hands so we could sign our names for them, and they loved us taking pictures with them. They were so incredibly cute and polite, and so interested in us. I suppose with so few ships visiting, we were the curiosity to them, not the other way round. Afterwards, we took a walking tour of the historic areas of the city and the old Dutch colonial houses that still existed. And it wasn't long before we ran into yet more children who were up for more photographs and selfies. This city seems disproportionately full of cute kids. Touchingly, there are reminders everywhere of the terrible events of Boxing Day 2004, when 130,000 Indonesians lost their lives in the tsunami, and it's still unknown how many died on the island itself. Maybe they will never know. Finally we had a little beach time and we were taken to a beautiful little bay where we drank water from fresh young coconuts and dipped our toes into the warm Andaman Sea. This was the most beautiful beach we had seen on our travels since Pirates Bay in Tobago. And this is where we end the first part of our spice route voyage. Two sea days followed, and in the next episode we'll feature quite literally tons of Indian elephants, cheeky monkeys eyeing up our lunch, a terrifying tuk-tuk ride, and some very calming monks. Oh, and a very special, as amazing evening indeed. Don't miss it. Thank you for watching. Please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification, and you'll be told when part two is ready. We'll see you then.